Hey there, Florida Climate Week crew. I'm Rachel Silverstein, your Miami waterkeeper, and we are thrilled to be here today talking to you about how to keep your water clean. Miami Waterkeeper is a nonprofit that protects the water you love in Miami-Dade and Broward counties. We're members of the Waterkeeper Alliance, which includes over 300 independent nonprofit organizations working for clean water across the globe. There are 15 waterkeeper groups right here in Florida. And today we're gonna to show you how to stop pollution when you see it while you're going about your daily life. It's called A Thousand Eyes on the Water and we need your help. In Florida, our 8,000 miles of coastline and over 800 miles of beaches aren't just for relaxing. They're doing hard work for our economy. Of the $112 billion that tourism brings in annually to our state, visiting a beach or a waterway is the number one activity of visitors. Almost 500,000 people are directly employed in our ocean economy. And all of this, as well as Florida's culture, recreation, and of course our environment, depend on having clean water. Florida's waterways are also particularly vulnerable to pollution because of our low elevation, our porous limestone geology, and the threat of sea level rise. Biscayne Bay is the jewel of our community. It's a shallow subtropical estuary near the city of Miami, and it's downstream from the Florida Everglades. Many people don't know it, but Miami-Dade County is actually the only county in the country that has two national parks, Biscayne National Park and Everglades National Park. Biscayne Bay is also a state aquatic preserve and outstanding Florida water, and it has a critical wildlife area that's so protected you can't even kayak through it without a permit. In the summer of 2020, our bay also experienced the most severe fish kill ever recorded. In just five days, over 27,000 fish and other kinds of wildlife died. Biscayne Bay had officially crossed a tipping point. While we're working on addressing some of these big sources of pollution, smaller pollution events are occurring around us all the time. Like death by a thousand cuts, these issues can cover large areas or small ones, but all of them add up. And all of these pollution events are affecting Biscayne Bay. That's why we're here today. We wanna to share with you how you can join in in protecting Florida's waterways from pollution. The Miami Waterkeeper team is just a small staff and we're working to protect well over 470 miles of waterways in Miami-Dade and Broward counties. These include coastlines, canals, rivers, and others. We need your help to make sure that water pollution doesn't go unnoticed in this huge area and our, across our huge watershed. You don't have to be on a boat and you might not be any closer to the water than the storm drain at the end of your street to see a pollution problem. You don't need any special equipment to document pollution, although your phone is gonna be a big help. What we're talking about here is specific to South Florida, but these principles can really be applied anywhere. The only thing that would change would be who you'd report to and the specifics of what your waterways look like. You can always report to your local waterkeeper organization. They're all across the country. Um, or your local state or county pollution control agency. One of our signature programs is the Thousand Eyes on the Water program. And now please welcome our awesome education and outreach manager, Aaron Cover, to share common pollution types that you might see and how to report them. Thanks, Rachel. Hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to learn about what you can do to keep our water clean. Our 1,000 Eyes on the Water program is a volunteer-based, community-led pollution detection and reporting program designed to increase Miami Waterkeeper's ability to monitor the bay and waterways of South Florida. Our 1,000 Eyes on the Water program trains you to be a champion for your waterways by training you how to observe, document, and report pollution you might see going about your daily life. In order to be able to spot and report pollution, let's go over the common types of pollution you may see in Biscayne Bay. The first one we'll go over is sediment. It often makes the water look light colored. It causes big plumes that can travel over long distances. Eventually, sediment can settle out of the water column and fall onto the seafloor, oftentimes burying seagrass and coral and possibly even clogging fish's gills. It may also be resuspending contamination. Sedimentation can cause serious harm to water quality and habitats. During dredging and construction, sediment curtains are required to contain the sediment or other measures must be taken to control the sedimentation. In this picture, although they have a sediment curtain set up, the sediment is clearly escaping the curtain, so it wasn't installed correctly. The sediment could be smothering seagrass and harming water quality. Many sediment pollution events come from construction sites that are unfortunately not properly maintaining their sediment on site. As seen in this image, this sediment curtain is also not working. 
Sediment may leak over a seawall or go through the storm drain system. This is one of the easiest types of pollution events to spot. The frequency of community reports of sedimentation even led to a new law allowing the city of Miami to shut down construction sites immediately and increasing fines. Dredging can also cause severe and widespread sedimentation on nearby ecosystems, such as coral reefs. Between 2013 and 2015, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers led a project to dredge Port Miami. Unfortunately, this project killed over half a million corals by burying them in an area the size of 200 football fields in sediment. Miami Waterkeeper filed an Endangered Species Act lawsuit. Here's our Miami waterkeeper, Rachel, diving in the dredging sediment to collect evidence. When corals are overwhelmed with sediment, the sediment starts to accumulate on top of the coral, and especially at the edges in what's known as the ring of death until it's eventually buried. And here you can see how large some of these plumes can get. This was taken in April 2015 by a Landsat satellite during the dredging project. For scale, compare the size of the Venetian Islands, Fisher Island, and even Virginia Key to the size of the sediment plume, which is also right on top of the Florida reef tract. This is an example of a large-scale sedimentation event. Years of litigation and the restoration of 10,000 corals resulted from a community report about the sediment that came from the dredging project. Another type of pollution you may see are oil slicks. Now, oil slicks may be the easiest to recognize thanks to the rainbow sheen floating on top of the water. This type of pollution is particularly harmful to wildlife and to humans who may be swimming. Unfortunately, this is also one of the most common pollution types you might see. It can be very difficult to trace these slicks since they can travel long distances. We report all oil spill sightings to the National Response Center. You are especially likely to see this type of pollution near marinas or storm drains or even gas stations. Anything where you see the oil is flowing down the drain. Next, let's talk about sewage leaks. Sewage leaks can cause major issues and can be hard to spot. They may look like different things. You might see bubbling on the surface of the water. You might see a differential in water density, like this video showing a sewage leak in the ocean outfall pipe that was reported by a community member. The county ignored that report for a year. When we found out about it, we sent divers to verify the leak and filed a notice of intent to sue. Within three days, the leak was fixed. This was a sludge leak reported by residents of an apartment building in downtown Miami. The water and sewer department had turned on a sewage sludge line between treatment plants that ran under the bay, but it had a big leak. They didn't know about it until we reported it, thanks to this community report. It resulted in a widespread no contact advisory for days. This report was sent in by a kayaker who had spotted a multi-million gallon spill under the Olita Bridge in Northern Biscayne Bay. The pipe was over 50 years old and had burst. It was spewing raw sewage into the bay for days before it could be shut off. If not for a community report, who knows how long this leak could have lasted. Next, let's talk about illegal dumping and chemicals. There are thousands of types of toxic chemicals that could get into our environment. Some you can see and some you can't. Chemicals like paint, household chemicals, herbicides, batteries, heavy metals, and more can cause serious harm to wildlife and our waterways. For example, you might see someone dumping something down a drain or a leaking dumpster or contaminated runoff from an industrial site getting into the water. What you might not see are things like hard surface roads, parking lots, and urban areas collect toxins such as lead, oil, cadmium from tires, and other pollutants which can be washed into waterways through our storm drains. A community member saw a city truck opening and discharging water down a drain. The liquid was described as black and smelly. The city responded to the report immediately and addressed the issue with the employee for not properly cleaning their drainage structure and dumping it down the drain. If you don't know what to do with your old chemicals, call your city. They often have days for free chemical disposal and drop-off points. Some chemicals you can neither see nor smell, but they are harmful. One example is PFAFs, or Forever Chemicals, which has now gotten into the water around the globe, including Antarctica. It's in almost all drinking water and is used in large numbers of manufactured products. 
In 2016, Miami Waterkeeper was battling a rule from the state of Florida that would have allowed over 82 different kinds of cancer-causing neurotoxic chemicals in our waterways. However, our advocacy and those of other waterkeepers around the state defeated this rule. Miami Waterkeeper has also worked to reduce pollution in our waterways by working on municipal bans of the harmful herbicide glyphosate, the primary chemical in Roundup. As a result of our advocacy efforts, 160 of the county's 200 miles of canals were no longer receiving herbicide spraying at all. Now let's talk about leaky dumpsters. Dumpsters can contain serious pollutants. They aren't supposed to be leaking, but unfortunately many do. If you see a dumpster leaking into a storm drain or even into a parking lot, be sure to report it. Let's move on to car washes and boat washes. Car washes and marinas are required to have containment for soap and detergents so that they don't go down the drain. If you see a car wash or marina using soap and letting it go down to the drain or washing directly into the bay, this may not be allowed. Make sure you report it. Marine debris can entangle marine animals, cause human health concerns, and clog storm drains, which ultimately cause flooding. Much of the debris in our waterways come from land-based sources or washes up on the beaches from other locations. Miami Waterkeeper hosts regular beach cleanups, and we work toward reducing the source of the problem, the overuse of single-use plastics, and especially styrofoam. We've worked with several municipalities on single-use plastic or styrofoam bans. You may also notice some places where debris routinely accumulates. This may be a sign of dumping upstream and could merit a pollution report. While we don't necessarily want to report every styrofoam cup or plastic straw that we see, there are some types of marine debris that you may consider reporting to us. Those would be too large or too dangerous to remove yourself like syringes or other medical waste. Some marine debris is too large to remove, like a sunken vessel, a mattress, or furniture. These are all things you'll want to report to us. Another uncommon source of pollution you may see are grease traps. Restaurants generate large amounts of grease. Now grease, if it goes down the drain, can cause major issues in the stormwater system. Restaurants have to use grease traps and pay to have them pumped out. Sometimes, though, people skip this step and try to dump grease down the drain, which is actually illegal. Also, you should never put old cooking grease or oil down the drain at home. Another thing to look out for are algae blooms. Algae blooms happen when there's too much nutrient pollution, coming from nitrogen and phosphorus specifically. They can be a sign that the system is out of balance. Look for changes in water color from clear to green or even brown. Although algae blooms themselves are not considered pollution, it's important to let agencies know when the system is out of balance, especially in cases like this picture. This is an example of one of the worst algae blooms in Biscayne Bay from 2020 after a major fish kill. Speaking of fish kills, another sign that the ecosystem of Biscayne Bay is seriously out of balance is a fish kill. These often happen from too much pollution resulting in low dissolved oxygen. And unfortunately, the fish literally suffocate. A sign of a serious fish kill is a large number of dead fish found together in a small area. They're particularly troubling if you see multiple species of fish or wildlife in the same area. Sometimes small bait fish, like pilchards and thread fins and herrings, might get discarded and look like a fish kill, just like you see in this picture. But if you're not sure, report it. We can always let you know if it's a fish kill or just discarded bait fish. Not all reports have to be pollution. Some can be reports of interesting marine life as well. For example, we got this video of two small tooth sawfish. Take a look. So just like you saw those small tooth sawfish, it's important that you report rare animal sightings. Here are four animals you should always report if you spot them. They're so rare that scientists like to track every single sighting. 
If you're lucky enough to see one of these animals, be prepared with date and time of the sighting, the exact location of the animal, GPS coordinates are preferred, the approximate size, any identifying marks or tags, and photos and videos if you can capture it. For certain animals, you should report them if they are seen injured, entangled, or unfortunately dead. These include turtles, manatees, whales, and dolphins. These animals aren't necessarily so rare that every sighting is tracked, but they are protected, so a team will respond if they are found injured or dead. Here's one of the only times in this training where we'll ask you to directly call the agencies in charge rather than Miami Waterkeeper. Time is of the essence here to save these animals. Make sure to never touch them or attempt to help them yourself. Call FWC and follow their instructions. After you've done that, then let us know through a pollution report. If you see any other kinds of injured or native wildlife like pelicans, birds, raccoons, or owls, be sure to call Pelican Harbor Seabird Station. They will respond and rehabilitate native animals. If you're watching this from outside of Miami, check out a local wildlife rescue organization near you. Now let's hear from Aliza for some important details on how to report pollution. Thanks, Erin. I'm Aliza, Miami Waterkeeper's Water Quality Research Manager. Now that you know how to observe and identify pollution and environmental incidents, you are now one of our eyes on the water. When making a report, first and foremost, make sure you're safe. Don't confront anyone or trespass, and don't try to clean it up yourself. Second, try to make your report as quickly as possible. Time is of the essence. The best way to submit a report is to go to our website, www.miamiwaterkeeper.org, and click Report Pollution. The form will walk you through all of the information we need. You can also send an email to pollution at miamiwaterkeeper.org. If you want to share a pollution event with us by tagging us on social posts, please also submit a report on our website. This will provide us with all the key information we need and allow us to respond as quickly as possible. Always include the date, time, and location of the incident, as well as photos or videos, which will help pollution responders rapidly address the issue. For an easy way to share your location, you can send us a screenshot of a pin on your map. Your phone is going to be the best tool for making a report. Photos and videos are very helpful. Try to also include details like estimated area that was affected or any identifiers for pollution sources, like the vessel name or tags. We highly recommend including your contact information for pollution responders to call for further details, although we do give you the option of an anonymous report. We won't share your information without your permission. Thanks, Erin and Eliza. Are you feeling ready to report pollution? Well, first I wanna give you some other ways to protect your water while you're going about your daily life. You may have a septic tank. Septic tanks are a form of on-site sewage treatment, and they're actually a huge pollution source for Biscayne Bay. They're leading to massive contamination of groundwater and surface water. First, you should find out if you have a septic tank, and if you do, make sure you're getting it inspected at least every three years to make sure it's working properly and properly treating the waste before it gets into the groundwater. Fertilizer runoff leads to algae blooms, seagrass die-offs, and fish kills. We worked for years to get one of the state's strongest fertilizer ordinances passed in Miami-Dade County, conducting science, research, and advocacy and education. To avoid contributing to fertilizer pollution from your own yard, Follow this new law by remembering to skip the fertilizer between May 15th and October 31st. During this period, it's so rainy, almost as soon as you've put the fertilizer on your property, it has rained and it has washed the fertilizer down the drain, into a canal, and it's gotten into our waterways before your plants can even use it. You should also remember that you never need to add phosphorus to the soils in Miami-Dade County. They're already very rich in phosphorus, so you can find fertilizers that are 0% phosphorus. You should also use at least 65% slow-release nitrogen in your fertilizer mixes. This makes it so that more of the fertilizer stays on the ground and can be used by your plants rather than getting washed down the drain. You should never apply fertilizer within about 20 feet of a waterway or storm drain. This gives the fertilizer a little bit of room to move when water hits the ground before it gets into our waterways. You can also help by spreading the word. You can talk to your neighbors, your HOA, your local parks, your cities, and your landscaping company, if you have one, about using fertilizer in a way that's safe for our waterways. It may not seem like a big deal, but pet waste can actually contribute in a big way, adding nutrients and bacteria to waterways. Always be sure to pick up after your pet. 
One of our junior ambassadors, Haim Steele, actually started a campaign to help his neighbors properly dispose of pet waste. His campaign is called Yes Poo Poo, No Poo Poo. And you can actually Google his organization to find out more about how you can get your neighborhood involved and use his civic approach to making peace in his neighborhood while also keeping the water clean. Please welcome Eliza again to give us some safe boating and fishing tips to make sure that your day out on the water is also helping to keep the water safe and clean. If you're driving a boat, be sure to stay within the channels and follow all posted speed limits, which can be found by following the link in the QR code. There are designated open water sports areas within the bay. Try to avoid driving over seagrass, especially at low tide, but if you have to, operate at idle speed. Manatee season is November 15th to March 31st, so you are required to drive at slow speed in certain portions of the channel. Manatees and sea turtles will sink down to avoid boats, but they need time to get out of the way. That's why speed limits are so important. Prevent pollution by using designated sewage pump out stations for your boat. Find the closest one by downloading the state's new Pump Out Nav app on the App Store or Google Play. And download our Thousand Eyes on the Water boater reference card to keep it on hand at all times. Now let's test your knowledge of pollution. What's wrong with this picture? Is this something that you would report? Take a minute, check out the picture. You're right, it's a sediment plume. You can see the light colored water coming from a storm drain, probably runoff from some kind of construction site or unsecured sediment from the land that's washing into the water. You would report this. Take a picture, take a video, record the location and send it in as soon as possible. Sometimes these plumes become really quickly dispersed and they're hard to see, so time is really of the essence. What do you see wrong in this picture? Is this something that you think you'd report? So we actually get a lot of reports of stuff that looks like this. It's actually sea foam and it's totally natural um, and it's proteins coming out of the water and, and kind of forming a foam on the surface. Um, but it can often be hard to tell whether it's natural sea foam or a chemical issue. So if you see it coming from a pipe, a boat, a truck, and it's leaving you know, a long string of foam that looks like this, it may not be from a natural source. If the bubbles look uniform and they're bright white, that also may be a man-made substance and not coming from nature. If the bubbles look different sizes, if um, they're a little bit discolored, if it's washing up along the shoreline over a large area, that's probably just natural sea foam and not something you need to report. If you're not sure, just send it in. What do you see wrong in this picture? Is this something you'd report? Take a minute and check it out. So this photo actually has two things that you could report. One is a derelict vessel that's obviously sunk and looks like it's been abandoned. This could pose a hazard to other boaters, um, an issue to swimmers, people jet skiing that can't see it under the water. Uh, and there's also an oil sheen in the water that's probably come from when this boat sank and it's resulting in pollution. So you definitely would report this. What do you see in this picture? Well, the water is definitely not a natural color of green. So this is something that you would report. A jogger reported this to us and it looks like it might be detergent or some kind of chemical spill. It turned out to actually be a dye test that the water and sewer department had put into the sewer lines to see if there was a leak in the system. In this case, it was harmless, but if you ever see something that looks like this, you should definitely report it. What do you see in this image? Well, this isn't necessarily something that you'd report, but if you're out on a boat, definitely watch where you're anchoring. You can do a lot of damage to seagrass or corals. If you can, try to attach to a mooring ball that's out on the reef or anchor in, in the sand in a place where you're not gonna do any damage to the habitat that's on the seafloor. Check this one out. Would you report this? So this one's a little bit tricky. This is something we also get reported often. You're gonna to wanna to look to see whether the discharge coming out of the pipe is discoloring the water, whether there's a smell associated with it, and if it looks like it's permanently installed in the seawall or is it a temporary pipe? Uh, does it look like it's a continuous discharge coming out or is it stopping and starting? Lots of these older buildings were actually permitted to have their AC cooling water discharged through pipes like this in the seawall. If it's clear, it doesn't smell, um, and it seems to be built into the seawall rather than some kind of a temporary structure, and it's not making a foam, it's probably okay. If you're not sure, just go ahead and report it and, and we'll check it out as well. This doesn't look like it's near the water, 
but take a look and see if you still think this could cause a water pollution problem. So you would want to report something like this because any dirt or sediment leaving a construction site is likely to be washed down the storm drain during the next rain and it could cause a sedimentation problem. It could also be spreading contamination out of the site. So all sediment from a construction site has to be contained on site. And if you see something like this, you should report it so that it can get fixed. Take a look and see if you see anything wrong in this picture. So of course, we don't need much explanation here. You should not wash your car directly on top of a waterway. Um, but while this is kind of a funny picture, it's important to remember that the waterway is really connected to what's happening on land. So any soap or detergent you're using to wash your boat or car could go down the drain and end up in a waterway like this. What do you see in this picture? Well, here's an example of someone doing it right. He's got a mat set up underneath the boat to catch any soapy runoff and to prevent it from going down the drain. He's also got a truck next to him to remove the waste. Check it out and see what's going on in this picture. You're right, you should never touch a manatee. You should report it if you see people interacting with a manatee in a way that's not allowed. Call FWC and follow their instructions. The same is true if you see a manatee in distress or injured, you should call FWC. Then let us know about your sighting. Another great way to help manatees is to slow down. They will move out of the way and they will go down in the water column if you're boating by, but they need time to move out of the way. And if you're going too fast, they just don't have the time. Check this one out. Would you report it? Absolutely. That's actually two extremely rare small tooth sawfish. This pair was filmed from a balcony in northern Biscayne Bay. Two had never been seen together in that part of the bay before, and this report was even included in a scientific paper. It's thought that the anthropos that happened at the start of COVID when the waters were very quiet that brought these normally shy creatures out into public view. As you can see, there are lots of things to report. We've just covered the basics here, but there are hundreds of types of reportable incidents that you might come across. If you aren't sure or something doesn't seem quite right, just snap a video, take a picture, let us know where you are, when you saw it, and make a report. You can scan the QR code right here to download the Thousand Eyes on the Water wallet reference card. Print it out and keep it in your wallet to always have images of some of the most common types of pollution on hand. So when you see pollution, you'll know how to report. Just remember, if you're in doubt, submit a report. Take a photo or video, let us know where you are, when you saw it, and go to miamiwaterkeeper.org backslash report to fill out the report form or you can send an email to pollution at miamiwaterkeeper.org. We're gonna be on call to review what you submit and if needed, to forward your report to the appropriate regulatory agency for an immediate response. We'll follow up with you and let you know what actions were taken in response to your report. Thanks again for taking the time to learn more about water pollution and thank you for keeping your eyes on the water. For more ways to get involved, check out our website at miamiwaterkeeper.org. We've got events, we've got other opportunities to learn more about how to protect your water and other ways to get involved. We hope to see you soon.